What's up guys, this is Matt from Become Elite, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to get a scholarship to play college soccer. There's actually a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into both the players and the coach to get seen and acknowledged to go play college soccer. Here's the 10 things that you can really do to help improve your chances. Number one, train hard every single day. Every single day you should be working at one aspect of your game, whether it's getting stronger in the gym, running harder to improve your fitness, working on your technique and skills, or if you're gonna work on your plyometrics and explosion. Bottom line, if you don't have the skills and technique needed for a college level athlete, you're not gonna be able to play college soccer. So the number one tip I'm gonna give you is you need to be training every single day. Number two, you need to have good grades and high test scores, especially if you're trying to play college soccer at a very good school. You're gonna to need to have this, even though most Division one schools can help you get into their school without the necessary requirements of grades and test scores. You are gonna to wanna to need these because if you have low grades and low test scores, no coach is gonna to wanna to pull the trigger on you because they don't believe that you're gonna be able to even stay within the school and stay eligible to play for the team. Bottom line for number two, make sure that your grades keep you eligible for the schools that you wanna to apply to and your test scores are within that same range. Step number three, develop a CV and highlight video. A CV basically tells schools about your basic information, your name, your date of birth, your nationality, your height, your weight, your basic accolades of what you've won in high school and for club, your skill sets, and other information that's pertinent to being scouted by colleges. A resume of your soccer skills. Your highlight video should be about three to four minutes long and make sure that it's varied. Don't have the same clip of you doing the same thing over and over again. If you're you know, technical and you wanna show your technical side, make sure you emphasize that. I'd say the number one thing that coaches use to really to look at players is a, is a highlight video. They look at the highlight video, they, if they like what they see, then they'll bring you in, they'll talk to you further, but you need to have that initial highlight video to really get them interested. Number four, decide what level of college soccer is best for you. There's Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, junior colleges. Division One, that's where they're offered 11 scholarships per team. It can be divided amongst all the players, so each player receives a certain amount of money, but it adds up to 11 full scholarships. It's the highest level of college soccer in America. Also, it's academically usually pretty tough to get into some most of the schools, so you're gonna need to have the skill set and the academics to be able to do so. Division Two. They can give out better scholarships, more financial aid. Um, the level is typically a little bit lower than most Division I schools, but again, the bottom level of Division I and the top level of Division II, they can intersect. I've seen Division II schools be Division I schools, and often they do play against each other a lot during preseason and spring season. Division Three does not give out athletic scholarships, so if you're one of the players that needs to get an athletic scholarship in order to play college soccer, it's not going to be the one for you. They do give out more academic scholarships. They tend to be more academically orientated. They're usually smaller programs. They don't have the same budgets as many of the Division I, Division II programs, um, but it's definitely a high level of soccer. NAIA has a lot of different rules than many of the Division I, Division II, and Division III programs. Uh, their foreign policy is different. Their scholarship policy is different. Make sure that you read up on this and the differences between Division I, Division II, and Division III so that you know what is more suitable for your needs. And there's also junior colleges, which is just two-year universities. A lot of times junior colleges help players that need those extra year or two years to develop their skill set before they can go on and play Division I or Division II soccer. Again, review these different types of divisions and decide which one really fits you best. Be honest with yourself and really determine what you, what realistically you can go for. Number five, once you determine what division that is best for you or a couple divisions that is best for you, determine a, a list of about 10 schools that you really are serious about and that you wanna pursue. My list of 10 schools involved about six division one schools, two division two schools, one division three, and one junior college. I had a couple of these for backups, a couple of them were my reach schools, but ultimately I knew I wanted to play division one soccer and I realistically, I thought I could do so. I developed that list based on the regions of where I wanted to play, schools that I honestly wanted to go to regardless of soccer or not, and also academically, schools that academically fit my needs, had science and math programs that I was interested in. Step number six, contact the schools on your list early. And by early, I mean sophomore, freshman year of high school, maybe junior year if you're really starting towards the end, send them your CV, 
your highlight video, and then a little paragraph about how and like why you're interested in their school. Simple as coach blank. I'm very interested in attending blank university. I play soccer for this club. I'm this years old. Here's my CV and highlight video. Um, I'd love to attend one of your ID clinics. I will be on campus here during these times and I'm attending these tournaments at these times. Be aware that some schools, especially Division One, cannot contact you back until you reach a certain age. So they're not ignoring you. Keep on sending them your emails. They wanna hear about you and update about your success. Step number seven, email the coaches about any college showcase tournaments that you'll be attending. Something simple and short, just basically saying, hey coach blank, I will be at this college showcase tournament at this time, playing these games, here's my schedule, here's my number. If you're attending, please let me know. Make it easy for the college coaches to come find you. Step number eight, visit as many schools on your list as you can. And when you do visit, make sure that you email the coaches saying that you'll be visiting their school at this time and you'd love to come in and talk to them. Regardless though, if you meet with coaches or not, you're gonna to wanna to check out the schools to make sure it's compatible with you. You don't wanna to go to a school, finally get on a team, do all this hard work, get to the school and then realize that you do not like it. Step number nine, your current coaches can help out a lot when it comes to college scouting. Talk to your club coach, talk to your high school coach, talk to any coach that is a fan of your style of play and try to get them on your side and help them talk to your college coaches that you're interested in. Especially when you narrow it down to about five schools, tell your coach that you're interested in these and that you've had conversations with them and try to get your coach to have a phone call or send an email just describing you as a player and hopefully trying to persuade that coach into taking a better look at you. Step number 10, don't give up. It's pretty cliche, but it's true. A lot of times coaches aren't looking for your certain position or your style of play, or simply they just don't have enough time to see enough of the players. And a lot of coaches say I wasn't fit for the program, and a lot of coaches see who didn't email or call me back. If you truly believe that you can play college soccer, go after your goal, you're gonna be able to do it. So there you go guys, that's Become Elite's 10 step guide to be recruited to play college soccer. I hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, please check out our other videos by clicking on our page. And also be sure to subscribe.